And now, please direct your attention to the screens for a special message from the President of Israel, Isaac Herzog. President Dr. Saul Lizabrand, Chair of the Board, Jeffrey Levine, Chair Emeritus, my friend, Ambassador Ronald S. Lauder, Chief Executive Officer Russell Robinson, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am extremely pleased to share a few words with all of you in Denver from the President's residence in Jerusalem. Here today at this JNF USA Global Conference for Israel, you come together to raise your voices loud and clear, not only in support of Israel and its people, but also in support of the core values of humanity. You come together with a clear and powerful message. Our heartbreak will not lead us to despair. It will bring us together and it will move us to act. From the first moments following the October 7th massacre, JNF has been there through its Israel resilience campaign. It continues to be there for Israel's displaced border communities, providing temporary housing, food, and other basic needs. It is also helping equip the emergency response and civilian security teams who are out there protecting our people. But it isn't only in Israel. JNF, Jewish National Fund USA, has also been leading the charge on another crucial battleground supporting pro-Israel students and faculty on college campuses across the United States. Of course, the JNF's relationship with the communities of the Western Negev didn't begin on October 7th. It is a relationship of intimacy, empathy, and deep caring that has been ongoing for two decades. And it is a relationship that reflects the deep bonds that connect our communities in Israel with the Jewish people all over the world. Friends, world Jewry has been there from the beginning. You have been there throughout, and you are there right now. I've been reading Russell's emails daily. I know what a great job he and the team are doing, mobiling, mobilizing en masse in immediate and urgent action for the state of Israel, for the communities, for the people in this very critical hour. So I thank you all. And I thank each and every one of you. And I know the un unbreakable spirit of our people and our age-old battle cry, which is Kol Israel Arevim Zeh Bazeh, will help our people turn this time of crisis into a moment of rebirth. You've always, JNF USA, you've always invested in the northern part of Israel, the Galilee, and in the southern part of Israel, the Negev. And now, now is the call for action to revitalize, to reclaim, to rebuild. And we will rebuild, absolutely. And we will see those communities going back home. And we will plant trees and build homes and put mezuzahs together with you. Thank you very much. Am Israel Chai. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the president of Jewish National Fund USA. Dr. Saul Lieserbram. So good morning, fellow Zionists. Before I start my remarks, I want to, there's a very special thank you to a group of people who worked tirelessly during the emergency campaign every single day. I'd like to recognize the Jewish National Fund staff in the U.S. and Israel, and the Alexander Muss High School staff, I ask you to please stand. <laughs> Thank you for, for all you do for working, for making our organization so great. I also want to recognize that a conference like this takes a lot of hard work and a lot of stakeholders. It's led by our Chief Leadership Officer, Yale Septi Kane, our Chief Marketing Officer, Jody Bodner, 
and our Center for Excellence Global Conference professional, Adele Stolowitz, also Mara Medoff and her staff. Thank you so much. This is day 58 of the world war in Israel. Our time together in Denver is almost at an end, but our work continues. Speaking personally, these past few days have been therapeutic and comforting. To be amongst friends, old and new, as well as family, to connect with those who are moving mountains to help the people of Israel and our Jewish communities in this hour of need, to be surrounded by this group whose love, moral clarity, and energy give me hope and strength. Thank you. We have more knowledge, more relationships, more connectivity. The resilience we gain and help shine new light through the darkness. I ask everyone in this room, remember this moment in Denver. Remember this room full of people and many more who aren't here. People who want to help. Connect everyone you know to help us achieve our goals. So, I'm going to go off script for a moment, and I know Jody's going to get mad at me or every, maybe Yale, but I'd like the high school, college, and JNF future members to stand up for one minute. So just take a look around. Look at these people. These are the people you need to invite into your homes and synagogues for a parlor meeting. Jewish National Fund USA has a speaker's bureau to provide a great educational event or a beer and bagel event, whatever you want to do. Bring them into your homes and your synagogues. These are the people who are and will be the light of Zionism. Reach out to your local professional for information how to host an event. So before we move on to the closing session, I also want to take a moment to thank Bob Lemke of United Water and Sanitation District. Your sponsorship of this program and continued support, one of the three Denver philanthropists that enabled a million dollar match for our emergency resilience campaign. And from one of your favorite poems by John Doan, you beautifully reminded us, quote, no man is an island, end quote. Thank you for always standing with Israel and the Jewish people. And now I'd like to invite up a true leader William Daroff, Chief Executive Officer of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organization, to share some thoughts. Good morning. It is my honor to join you at this closing plenary of the historic Global Conference for Israel. Kolokavod to my good friend and mentor, the Zionist visionary, Russell Robinson. You have done so much for the Jewish world and for the state of Israel. And thank you, Saul, and to the entire Jewish National Fund USA team. Your organization is a living testament to the strength of the relationship between Israel and American Jewry. I spent the Shabbat of October 6th and 7th in the old city of Jerusalem. I went down to the Kotel, to the Western Wall, on Friday night for Shabbat and Simchat Torah celebrations. The joy of the evening, dancing with the Torah, left me with a big smile for the next 12 hours or so. And then on Saturday morning, I, along with thousands of others, were awoken by rocket alerts in Jerusalem. Slowly, slowly, news began trickling in. Rumors, hearing of, and then seeing the barbar barbarity that befell our people. 
I watched as the full scope of the tragedy filtered into the global Jewish consciousness throughout the day and helped the American Jewish community mobilize as one in support of Israel. It became very clear very quickly that every resource, every dollar, every ounce of strength available to the American Jewish community would be needed to help Israel. Our Conference of Presidents, 50 member organizations are doing just that. American Jews are sending financial aid, lobbying our government, sending supplies to soldiers and much more. As we've heard here over the last four days, JNF USA is at the vanguard of providing a better future for our Israeli brothers and sisters, providing for evacuees, ramping up the all so important trauma therapy, providing firefighting equipment, working on plans for the renaissance of the south of Israel. And as the father of a former lone soldier, let me thank you so much for working with our partners at Nefesh Benefesh and our member organizations, the Friends of the IDF, to launch Operation Hug to reunite parents abroad with lone soldiers on combat duty. As I noted, the Conference of Presidents has been deeply engaged in the post-October 7th reality. On October 17th, the Conference of Presidents and our partners gathered over 350 Jewish leaders from across the country at a historic synagogue in Washington, D.C. We were addressed in person by all four bipartisan leaders of Congress, by the Secretary of Homeland Security, as well as by a survivor of the NOAA, NOVA Music Festival, Noah Ben Artsy. Immediately after that event ended, a smaller group of 50 of us flew from Washington to Israel for an emergency solidarity mission, where over the course of 36 hours, we met with hostage families, with wounded soldiers, with evacuees from the south, with President Herzog, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Foreign Minister Cohen, Strategic Affairs Minister Dermer, and other officials. This was the first solidarity mission to Israel by Jewish leaders after October 7th, but I'm so gratified that it's not the last. Many are flocking to Israel to be supportive in any way they can. Dozens of trips of Jews from every walk of life are traveling to bear witness, to hug our extended family. People continue to line up to volunteer, to pick fruit on farms, to cook meals for soldiers, to stuff care packages for evacuees, to give assistance where needed. I encourage you to join the hundreds who are going on JNF's Volunteer in Israel program to lend a hand as well. Here at home, as I noted, American Jewry is doing what we can to ensure that our support for Israel and for combating anti-Semitism is recognized and heard. 19 days ago, led by the Conference of Presidents and Jewish Federations, JNF and many others, participated in the March for Israel, which with over 290,000 attendees was the largest pro-Israel gathering in history. Over 290,000 of us gathered on the National Mall in front of the United States Capitol to march for Israel, to march against anti-Semitism, and to march for the demand to demand the release of our hostages. We stood together as one people with one heart because we are stronger when we stand as one. Support for Israel transcends religious and political boundaries. The entire Jewish nation is at war. Gaza may be the front line, but we are all fighting. We are fighting to support the people of Israel. We are fighting to combat the scourge of anti-Semitism that is metastasizing in our communities. And we are fighting for the return of our hostages. This collective determination is how we will overcome these challenges and win. As a people, we are stronger when we are unified. That is how the Jewish people survived and thrived throughout history and how we will survive and thrive during these dark days, together arm in arm, feeling our way forward one step at a time. In times of crisis, Jews band together. In the wake of October 7th, we are unified as a people as never before. We recognize and embrace our collective obligation to mutually support each other. We will continue to be resilient against those who condemn us. We will continue to defend Israel's war against the Hamas terrorist army 
and against those who seek to delegitimize Israel's right to defend herself. We must not tolerate anti-Semitism in any of its manifestations, and we must keep the hostages in the forefront of our thoughts and actions, in our conversations, in our social media, and in our prayers until they all come home. May Hashem continue to bless the Jewish people, the people of Israel, the state and soldiers of Israel, our precious and blessed hostages, and the United States of America. Thank you. God bless you all. I'm Israel Hai. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Chief Executive Officer of Jewish National Fund USA, Russell Robinson. Good people, young people, children, seniors, women, men, women, soldiers, citizens of the State of Israel and from 30 different countries. Their lives extinguished, kidnapped, or injured. It is so difficult during these times to think of hope and dreams, to have a vision of what tomorrow could bring. The pain is so great. Thousands of funerals, millions of tears, pain and loss that will never, ever be repaired. Psychological and mental damage. Let me assure you that the 70,000 people who lived in Israel envelope, that we used to refer to as the Gaza envelope, but now is the Israel envelope, for the police who came to the crime scene, for the soldiers, the reporters who covered it, life will never be the same. Sleep will never be the same. Sunrise will never be the same. Yet, we will never allow our light to go out. Now, today's generation has only known the existence of the State of Israel as part of their lives. Over the years, we've attempted to tell the stories of the Holocaust and memorialize those who we lost on Yom HaShoah. We attempted as best we could to tell the stories, to make the statement, never again, never again. But it's hard to explain to a young person, or to anyone for that matter, that a man could put a human being in an oven and turn them into ashes that you could line up children, mothers, fathers, naked, shoot them and put them into mass graves? It's impossible. And I have to say, sadly, too many organizations, synagogues, all of us, we stopped telling the story. We also quit telling the story of the romantic story of Israel's independence. You know, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, David Ben-Gurion brought together a group of leaders, most who had never, ever lived in a democracy in their life, and established the state of Israel for the Jewish people everywhere. Ben-Gurion was told that they were going to be attacked by millions and it would be the end of the Jewish people. And on his shoulders was the opportunity to reestablish the state of Israel after 2,000 years. Yet on his shoulders was also the threat that 800,000 Jews 
would be wiped out. We won. And we created a Jewish nation, yes, yes, with a lot of imperfections, yet with hope and dreams and vision. A nation that truly makes the world a better place. We forgot the romantic stories, and instead, we got involved in politics and got mad over something Israel did wrong. We left out the millions of things that they did to make our world a better place. We left out the beautiful stories of the melting pot of Israel's Jews and Arabs, Bedouins, Christians, Druze, Hindus, yes, all the people that make up our beautiful nation of Israel. Or we just quit telling the story altogether. Well, October 7th and Kerb happened. And now we have a new responsibility. We must continue to tell the story of that day for generations. The story that is beyond belief of people shooting people, burning their bodies, killing babies in front of their mothers and mothers in front of their babies. But we must never stop telling that story if we hope that never again, that never again can finally be never again. We must tell our story of light over darkness, our hope, our belief, and we must have a vision. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Jewish National Fund story is all about. We believe in tomorrow, and we will build tomorrow. We will show our enemies that you cannot extinguish our light, you cannot extinguish our hope. On October 7th, I and we lost a dear friend. He was a partner, a partner in our vision for tomorrow, Ophir Lipstein, the mayor of Shah Negev. I texted him on that day as Marcy and I were arriving in Israel. We were going to be meeting to talk about better Israel, hope, dreams, projects. I assure you that we were going to be talking about economic development for the Palestinians. He was obsessed with it. The very ones who took his life. But I know, Ophir, and if he were to be here today, he would be telling us to move forward. He would be telling his story of hope and dreams. To tell you a little something about Ophir, I've asked Daron Lipstein, his brother, to join us, to share their pain and their hopes and their dreams with us. Here was registering to this event six months ago. He loved to come to this event to meet you, his friends, and it is so sad to come with his family, Vered, Idan, Uri, and not to be with him here today. First, I want to thank you, especially you, Rafa, for the love that you all gave Ophir in his life, but the hug that I received when I first saw you after Ophir died, and the hugs that I received from you, everyone in this event who came to the S Expo and, and really showed empathy and love and friendship. Ophir was one out of 1,400, and each and every one of us and you know someone who died, murdered, kidnapped that day. And what happened to us in Israel was that suddenly, after many years, we felt united.
one nation. We are all helping each other. And what I've seen here is that we are not alone in Israel. You are exactly with us. The one question that I hear everywhere is how can we help? How can we assist? And, you, and it is so important to say it's above word, it's helping on a daily basis because, you know, our government is not giving the solution, but the people are, and you are, and this is so helpful. The reason why I'm here is to continue together with you, Janet, the legacy of Ophir. Hallelujah. Netaim. Hamsa. Thank you, Miriam, for being here, and Shiri for founding this organization. And together, I'm sure, especially after I hear you and I feel you, it will be bigger, it will be greater, it will give Israel and you, the Jewish people of the diaspora, our friends, our brothers, a better future for the world. Because we are the light. We are the light and we are bringing light to the world and if Ophir was here, he would say, let's have a plan of what is happening after the war, after all the hostages, the kidnapped people, our friends, Shavim Abaita, coming back home. What is the next stage? And going back home, I will tell all my brothers and sisters that you are not only our back, you are our best allies, partners, family. We are one family worldwide. And I'm so grateful for that. Todaraba. Doron, please, Gilbert as well, to the family. We're committed to keeping his flame burning bright and leading us on our way. Now it's our moment to believe in tomorrow. You know, the IDF soldiers are doing their job and they'll continue to work. But we are on the front line as well. Not with helicopters and F-16s and tanks. We are on the front lines as one family with the friends and family in Israel and around the world because we have a responsibility and an opportunity to rebuild. You know, the sounds of building. It is the sound of creating tomorrow. That sound that sound will defeat our enemies. That is why we're announcing today the kickoff of an international plan, Leave Not Biachad, Build Together. <clears throat> to rebuild the Israel Envelope region, together, Israelis, European, Canadians, Americans, Everyone, all of us are going to join. Yes, monetarily and physically, emotionally. Because we're all going to be stepping in to today's greatest movement, the era of the new Zionist movement, propelled by our spirit of partnership. We know that much work still needs to be done. But we must believe. We must believe. And we must plan to make it happen for tomorrow. You know, prior to the establishment of the State of Israel, the Karen Kayemet Le Israel was there. And they're here today to help us kick off Leave Not Biachad as partners. 
Now, we have signed a memorandum of understanding that we're going to be taking to our boards for ratification on a new fund, a $50 million fund. $25 million that we're going to raise, $25 million that they're going to invest in together. Leave not biachad, build together. So I'd now like to welcome the Vice Chairman of the Karen Kayyem in Israel, David Yairi, to come up. Thank you, Russell. And thank you to the incredible Jewish National Fund USA family for welcoming us so warmly. We came as a delegation, the largest delegation from Kakal in the history to come to the JNF USA conference. And many of us know Kakal in the English words, Jewish National Fund. In the end, we're all one mishpacha. Russell, Saul, and Joe, and the incredible army of passionate leaders, volunteers, dedicated professional team, you've made us feel at home and even arranged for some snow for us from Israel, which we don't get a lot of. I'd like to ask our team, Kakao delegation, to join me on stage, if you don't mind. Ronit Boitner, a leader in the reform movement in Israel, lives in Modi'in, and her son is now serving in the army at, as a Tzanchan. And what it means for us to come here, thank you, for Ronit, for joining us. Dani Avidor, a fellow board member of Kakao, an officer in the army, and a leader, and a very, very driven entrepreneur. Shibi Baron, who lives in Kibbutz Shvaim, our chief legal counsel, has two daughters serving in the IDF right now. And for those who know and have followed what Russell said earlier, Kibbutz Shvaim, Shimi's Kibbutz, has embraced and welcomed the evacuees from Kfar Aza, where Ophir was killed. Roni Vinikov lives in Modi'in. While working on all of these issues together, his son was just called up and is now moved in to Gaza. And he's in the Sayeret Givati. Sent a picture right before they went in, just earlier this week. As we're sitting here, Ronnie is struggling between his thoughts of his son and also how we're going to build back together. Thank you for being with us. And last but not least, Nancy Sada, a fellow Ole, Ola, who made Aliyah from Italy. She is the representative and she is the chief of staff for our chairwoman, Ifat Ovadia Luski, who couldn't come here right now because of the situation in Israel, but sends her greetings as she did at the opening and outset of this conference. Also, for those who know our CEO, and you met him, Yuval Yeni, was here, was here on Shabbat and had to fly back to Israel. His son, is being drafted as a combat soldier on Wednesday. And so the commitment for us to do this could not be louder. There's one other person I'd like us to recognize. I don't know, many of you don't know him. He served as a special ambassador. His name is Zohar Vlosky. <laughs> Zohar doesn't have that much energy. But Zohar served as a U.S. representative for Karen Kayemet, today serves as the global executive director of Zionist education for JNF USA. But in reality, Zohar is a public servant for the Jewish people. Thank you, Zohar. <laughs> for those who are confused, some of you know me, my name was David Borowicz, but I Hebraicized it when I moved to Israel before making Aliyah and serving as a lone soldier in a combat unit in the tanks corps. Yari means forest, so I guess it was eventual that I was going to join Kakao. But our delegation is here, representing with the full support and backing of 37 members of the board of directors, over 1,000 dedicated workers across Kakao, and all under the leadership of our chairwoman, Ifat Ovadyaluski, the first female chair of Keren Kayem at Israel's history. Karen Kayemet was founded at the Fifth World Zionist Congress. It took us a few years. In 1901, as the operational financial arm, 
For the past 122 years, our shared mission has been to build our country, to buy the lands, invest infrastructure, forest, water, develop communities, Zionist education, and all throughout our homeland. But as we've talked about, Russell, that was all before October 7th. October 7th changed the Jewish people. The horrific massacre of Jews in cities, towns, and parks in the South was more than just a declaration of war against Israel. It revealed a sinister declaration of war against Jews around the world. What happened before October 7th cannot be the same after October 7th. The Jewish people demand and deserve more from our leaders. When the Jewish people are divided, we are vulnerable. But when we are united, we're an unstoppable force of good in the world. So it's time to put aside our differences and unite. Those who screamed at each other in Israel in the civil protests across the streets just days before October 7th now serve shoulder to shoulder to defend our homeland. This spirit of mobilization must drive our Jewish leaders, it must drive us, and it must drive Jewish communities across the world. It is this spirit that brings us here today. After October 7th, we will be measured by our actions and not our words. Today we stand together, Keren Kayemet and the Jewish National Fund USA, and we announce new mathematics. One plus one equals 200 million shekel. And that is just the beginning of what we can do. Our destinies and our dreams are intertwined. And what we can build together with this joint fund far exceeds what we can each build alone. When we look and sat with Michal Uziel, or Vered Lipstein over Shabbat, and the Lipstein family in the eyes, we owe them a real plan. And the promise that we will be there with them every step of the way and that we will not falter. In this fund, we will decide on the projects together, and we will work through the challenges as they'll arise. We'll work them through them. Because on billboards across Israel, and when you're all going to be there volunteering, you'll see this one message. Biyachad ninatzeach. Together, we will prevail. Together, we will build back our communities in the Western Negev or the Israel envelope with, real, with their leadership and with their needs in mind. Together, We'll create capacity for Zionist education and more capacity for more students to be able to attend the Mas High School. Together, we will make sure that the Re'im Forest, where 364 young people were slaughtered during the Nova Party, will become a site to celebrate life and not focus on death. Together, we will dare to dream, to plan, to create, and to build. Anything less is unacceptable. And when we look back on this time, let it be written, in Denver, we established the fund to rebuild the South together. In just a few days, we and Jews around the world will celebrate Hanukkah, the festival of lights. It's a word that we've heard throughout the weekend. It was over 2,150 years ago when the Jewish people were divided Antiochus and the Greek armies defiled our second temple. Jews were denied the right to practice our faith, and the worst form of Jew hatred was enacted. It was a dark time when some of the hatred was aided by splinter groups within the Jewish communities who wanted to become Hellenists. A small band of Maccabees from the city of Modin led a revolt and rededicated the temple on the 25th of the Jewish month of Kislev, which falls on this Thursday night. This story of the small being victorious over the many is the same story that played out 75 years ago in May 1948, when a small army of Jews declared independence in our ancient homeland and established Jewish sovereignty in our land. Like the Maccabees, our fight for independence in 1948 was led by a small group of mostly young people who came as pioneers. And so we met many students this weekend. Are you here now this morning? So you on your campuses and our soldiers on the battlefields 
are our modern day Maccabees. As we light the Chanukiot for eight days starting on Thursday, let us light them with pride. In each community and on each campus, let us invite the presidents of universities, student groups, friends, allies, and forces of good to join us in spreading light. Let that light reach our 137 hostages, including my friend John Poland's son, Hirsch, who are held captive in dark tunnels under Gaza. Together, Keren Kayemit and JNF USA, we brought these identification tags. I like that term better than dog tags. And we brought them from Israel to wear around our necks in solidarity and to keep this issue at the forefront. If you did not receive one, please see any of us afterwards. Let us wear these tags to keep their plight close to our hearts until all of them are home. And let us pray for their safe return. Everyone in this room knows soldiers on the battlefield. Let us pray for their well-being and let them be victorious and return home safely to their families. Let us take time for gratitude to one another, to our partners and friends at JNF USA. Take time to thank all those who stand with us, including the police and the law enforcement outside. Let us renew Zionism together and build back the Western Negev, strengthen the north of Israel, ensure the economic and moral resilience of our people, strengthen the bridge between global Jewish communities and our one and only homeland with its eternal capital in Jerusalem. And let us take the spirit of unity, the love and the light of this inspiring gathering and spread it across the Jewish world with the strongest and most resounding message of Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you, David, and thank you, Karen Kayemeth as well. Now, let me give you some of our strategic thinking of our plan. First, we're going to be working with the government of Israel and taking our opportunity to not just match, but triple and quadruple our money that we're going to invest. We're going to be making sure that they also meet their obligations. We're going to work closely with everyone on this rebuilding process. With Jewish national funds around the world through Karen Kayemet and any other organization that would like to join us. This is not our plan, it is everyone's plan to build together and to make the Israel Envelope region the envy of all of Israel. Now it won't be easy. A lot of people are not even talking about moving back because of trauma, because of pain, because of security concerns, as well as the damage to their homes and their communities. So we know that this will be a big mountain to climb, yet we believe we can because we are the Jewish National Fund USA, and we are Karen Kayyem at Israel, and we are all the other organizations joining us together because we have so much great expertise collectively. And our goal is simple, to build together. We'll never say it cannot be done. Rather, we will always say it will be done. You know, 2,000 years ago on Masada, they thought it was the end of the Jewish people. In 1948, few believed. And we're here 75 years later. You know, we protested in Washington and brought freedom to Soviet Jews and freedom to the entire world. And we brought home Ethiopian Jews. 
The first time in the history of the world that blacks were brought in as citizens, not as slaves. To say it simple, we do the impossible. Our Leave Not Biachad Build Together plan will be led, will be led by the people of the Israel envelope. Their buy-in is the cornerstone of our plan. We'll do the assessment of every village in Kibbutzim. The Moshavs and the regions and the cities will all work together. We'll then design together with the residents hand in hand how they imagine what are their dreams for their city and for their community? What could it be? And we're going to do it with volunteers as well. Volunteers from Israel, from the communities themselves, from all around the world coming together with community leaders and project managers and professionals. We will rebuild, we'll replant, and we will repaint we will provide new furniture. We'll place benches in their front lawns. We'll redo their roads and their parks, repaint their shelters and community buildings because we're going to provide that reveal moment. As they re-enter their communities, they will see the beginnings of tomorrow. We also want to build on the feeling that we have today the feeling that is going on in Israel and here, the collective feeling of working together. We have a collective responsibility. This is no longer about right or left, religious or not, Likud or labor, Republican or Democrat. That was yesterday's conversation. Today, it is the rebirth of the most beautiful movement, Zionism. Our work and our words are about one people. That is why our volunteer involvement in our Build Together plan is so important. Now we're going to ask architects in Israel and around the world to participate, to create an element to the community. You know, maybe it's an entranceway, a community center, a park. Design something special. So it'd be that special touch when those people come back to their communities. Our rebuild plan has no ideas. No ideas are out of line. Everything is welcome. So I got to tell you, get ready. Yeah, to give more money. And to be more involved. Because we are bringing the light and we are building our Zionist movement for tomorrow, today. Our Build Together plan will include signature projects. An example is like in Eshkol, the Resilience Center. It's going to be rebuilt to be twice the size, fortified and be surrounded by beautiful parks and gardens. They'll be integrated into the very therapy process. We're going to build uh, some sort of pathway of remembrance, a pathway of hope. It'll be a memorial to those lives that were taken from us. It'll be built from Steyrot through Sharhan Negev to Sapir College to Eshkol, to Stev Negev to Chof Ashkelon. It'll include bike trails and meditation and family gathering areas. You know, you'll be able to ride a bike and walk in a beautiful pathways lined by over 1,400 trees in honor of those that were murdered and the soldiers who fought the battle of good, the battle of life. We'll fund a multi-million dollar music scholarship program so that every child in the Israel envelope who wants and des desires to play will play music of hope and love. You know, they murder our young people at the festival, but they will not stop our music from playing. We are going to build the largest community center in the entire area. One in which we'll have a music hall, an auditorium, a gathering place for all the people of the Israel envelope. 
We're going to build a world-class sports facility. We were working with Ophir on this project in Shar Hanegev. And I'm telling you, it's going to include a world-class track and field, soccer, lacrosse fields, locker rooms, seating for thousands. It's going to be a place that, well, maybe, maybe every year one or two professional soccer teams will come and even play their exhibition games there. Or maybe, maybe the Israel Envelope will have their own professional soccer team and the Israel Cup will be given to the people of the Israel Envelope. <laughs> Steyrot is going to utilize its image as a music and creative city to recreate the downtown area with shops and small theaters. It'll include new housing sites and new parks, business centers and smart hubs. So it will be a hub for the students of Sapir College. They'll want to visit, and yes, They'll even want to stay and make their home in Steyrot. We understand that security, security, security is the number one issue. The government of Israel will carry the major responsibility. But we have a role to play. We will assist each community, each moshav and kibbutz in developing a new civil defense first responder medical fire and rescue center. Now this is a new concept, but our idea is that it will be operated 24 hours a day by volunteers, trained by the firefighters, authorities, homeland security, the medical systems. Each station will include firefighting and medical equipment, defense equipment, and a communication and control center. Now we have been working with the Israel firefighters through our task force for the past year through Penny Rosen, our chairman, in creating a volunteer fire department throughout Israel anyway. So now, we're thinking, how do we combine that effort into civil defense, rescue, and together be first responders for defense to make every community feel safe and to be mobilized in minutes? There'll be a transition for the evacuees. In the next one, two, maybe even three years before some of them will move back home. Now we're working with the government on assessing mass transportation to make sure that there's transportation to take them from where they are to their jobs during this time. We're going to be utilizing, though, the infrastructure that was developed through our Jewish National Found Housing Development Fund, Jeff Schwartz, in places like Yoracham and Ramat HaNegev and other places in the Negev. Together with the government of Israel, we're looking at how to bring manufactured housing, not little caravans, manufactured housing, 1,000, 1,200 square feet homes set in a community setting. We'll build the parks, the front yards, and the backyards, and the bike trails, and we'll create a place for the evacuees to leave the hotels and to live in a community until they can go home. But I want you to imagine, imagine Ramat HaNegev, 300 housing sites. Two years, the evacuees are living there. Then they go home. But the Jewish National Fund helps them bring 300 new families to Ramat HaNegev. Wow, we've helped populate the Negev. We gave dignity and brought the people home. All in one plan, I think that's the Jewish National Fund USA and all of us working together. Now, some communities have already moved to temporary locations in Tel Aviv and Netanya and in uh, uh, Jerusalem and other places, and we're working with them in helping refurnish rooms and places for classrooms and bringing social workers and programs there and giving them the assistance during that time. Our Leave Not Biahad plan, built together, includes a lot of different innovative ideas. There are ideas that we're working on. Ideas like bringing ultra-Orthodox and Arabs and Bedouins, 18 to 22-year-olds, to become farmers, and to work in the farms. We'll provide special housing in a village that gives them 
their lifestyle and opportunity. It'll be a potentially replacement for their army service. They'll be paid to farm, replacing foreign workers. Now, we're also working with Israel businesses and farmers throughout to develop investment vehicles. I'm working with Sam Goldberg and Alan Wall, KPMG, Mike Stein, the Volcani Center, and others in helping to design to make up startup investment opportunities, to farm loans, to help build back businesses, to keep farms in business, and to create new businesses. We're also going to be utilizing the Lauder Employment Center, working with major employees and working with their HR directors to make sure that we're giving the job opportunities that are available, particularly in the Israel envelope, to be able to create more job opportunities. And we're going to be developing a small business association the same way we did up north, in the Israel envelope and in the Negev. We're working with Nefesh Benefesh. Yeah, Nefesh Benefesh. There's going to be a growth in North Americans making Aliyah. And we're working with them to make sure that the Israel envelope is part of the relocation dream. Now, the people of the Israel Envelope, I'll say it again and again, are the most important part of our Build Together plan. And we know, we know that they are broken. No one, no one does not have a circle of pain. We know that there's people with special needs, and we're working with LOTEM, to develop programs for them. We're working with Ade Negev and the Rehabilitation Hospital for the many Israeli IDF soldiers who are in need. Working with Green Horizons and Hashomer and Macomb to make sure that we play a vital role from teen to seniors for programming for all the people. Now mental health Mental health is not something we like to talk about or we talk about often, but we must. There is a lot of trauma and PTSD. We'll work with the JDC, we'll work with the Israel Trauma Association. We're even working with an organization called Ramon Farms, Creative Ideas of Therapeutic Farms, designed for 14 to 18 year olds and IDF soldiers who are suffering post-trauma. But today we have with us one of the leaders, one of the leaders in trauma and therapeutic services from Steyrot. Ayelet has been instrumental in providing support and training and facilitating resilience response for municipalities in the regions. Ayelet will offer us insights, insights to the road we have ahead of us and the partnership we must play. Please welcome Ayelet Shmuel. Hello, everyone. So I came here really prepared with a speech. Honestly, I did. And it was a good one, too. Um, however, this morning, um, I got up and I saw the news from Sterot, and I saw that we had three direct hits from rockets. And I don't know, can you hear me from here? I think you do. Um, and one, one rocket hit a synagogue. And I saw the pictures, and I looked at it, and I knew no one was hurt because the city is empty. <laughs> okay? In Sterot, right now, we have 30,000 people that are evacuees. Right? And they're spread over 105 hotels throughout the country. We have them spread out in five major centers, right? In Elat, we have about 12,000 people. We have them in um, the Dead Sea, in Atania, in Tel Aviv, and in Jerusalem. Just to remind you, three days ago, when I was on my flight here, there was a terror attack in Jerusalem, right? And four people were killed where that happened right next to the hotels where our evacuees are staying at. What I'm trying to say is that it's not over. <laughs> this is not over yet, it's not done. We're in the middle of a crisis, it's an ongoing trauma, and anyone that has been living in Israel lately knows that. I live in Ashkelon and I work in Sderot, 
And I go from one war zone to the other daily. And a war does something to you, especially a war like the one we, the one that started in October 7th. It changes you completely. I'm used to rockets. I'm, in a way, I guess in a very twisted way, I'm fine with them. I hear the siren, I know where to go, I know what to do. I'm not very scared of them. But when it comes to what happened on October 7th, everything changed in me. And I found myself struggling to find resilience, struggling to know, okay, what do I do? If they come to my home, what do I do? If I'm driving from Ashkelon to Sderot, what do I do? How do I protect myself from terrorists? I know what to do with rockets. I don't know what to do with terrorists. It changes everything you do, and it changes the way that you think. And when Russell was talking just now about mental health, that's exactly what he was talking about. We are in the middle of a crisis, and right now we're dealing with mental health intervention, and we're doing it, and they're doing a very good job in all the centers throughout the country. The resilience centers know what they're doing. People are trained, and they're very well trained, and they know how to do it. The problem that we're having right now is that we don't have enough personnel. This tragedy caught us, you know, without enough, I think, personnel, just because it's all over the country. People from the Nova Festival, some of them were living in Ranana. There are no resilience centers in Ranana. People don't know war traumas or how to treat war traumas in Ranana or in Herzliya or in Tel Aviv. So we found ourselves in a situation where we needed to train a lot of people and do it really, really fast. I want to go back to Sderot for a second, and I want to give you an example. And I think I was talking to um, somebody here from JNF this morning, and I said I really wanted to speak from the heart, because when you talk about the numbers and you talk about trauma in general terms, that's one thing. But when you, when you talk about, um, when you give examples, it's very, very different. So I can tell you that for me, what does that mean to be a mother during this time? What does a resilient mother look like? What should I tell my kid? I live in Ashkelon, we have sirens all the time. On October 7th, my kid was outside. He was caught outside. 6.30 in the morning, he's crazy, he's training for, to the, for the army, and he was caught outside with his friends, telling me, Ima, this is different. I don't know what to do. This is not regular sirens, what should we do? And of course, I told him, you know what, it does sound different, go home. He got home and he was fine, but when it comes to mental health, he is not the same. Now, what does a mother do? How do you take your child and make sure that this thing is not gonna destroy him, that this thing is gonna make him more resilient, that he will be able to come out the other side of this. Do you make him stay home, not leave the house, stay close to the bomb shelter? Or do you go for a meeting, which is the rule number one in resilience? If you want people to be resilient, give them a purpose, give them a meaning, give them something to believe in, so he started volunteering. He started, you know, delivering packages to people that were stuck at home because no one would leave their house. And this is Ashkelon. Ashkelon was a ghost town. Sderot, people were stuck in their homes for over a week, not being able to get anywhere. But the minute you had, the minute you gave people purpose, the minute they were able to do something for someone else in order to fight this crisis, then, You've got yourself resiliency. And I want to say thank you to JNF USA because I know that they were, are an amazing partner with really putting um, a, a holistic um, strategy, okay, when it comes to resilience. They are pushing resilience everywhere we go, moving people into action, even though it's very, very difficult right now. So, when it comes to resiliency, it's bounce back and bounce back better. Build back better. Russell was talking about the plan here, and it's an amazing plan. You have a physical plan, that's great. You need to have yourself a mental health plan because this is what the people in the Israel envelope, and I really like that term, are gonna need. So our concern is the lot, really, is how are we gonna bring people back home? How are we gonna make them find that meaning, that purpose that would say, we wanna come back and live in Sderot, even though we experience this trauma.
how are we going to do this and we're going to create you know, businesses and employment and all that, but you have to give them one, a sense of safety, and second, a sense of meaning. For me, I think that the way I see it is that we fight because we love. They fight because they hate. We fight because we love. We are very, very different than they are. And the meaning that I have is that I am done justifying the fact that I'm Jewish and Israeli. I am going from the defense to the offense. And if anyone has a problem with the fact that I live in Israel, that I'm Zionist, that I'm Jewish, then they better come up with the answers and not me. I am changing the way we do things. It is time to shift the narrative, to no longer be on the defense. We are done. Enough is enough, and never again means never again. The other thing that you need is hope, and I'm running out of time, and I'm going to say something about hope. Coming here was very difficult for me to leave the house and be here. But as I look at this crowd, you guys give me a lot of hope, and I understand now that we stand in unity. We are together fighting this, and we are together fighting the, the waves of anti-Semitism. And when you have that, you can create resiliency, meaning, purpose, hope, and being together. And I have to tell you, I've lived in Colorado for many years, and I never actually got it. I thought I did, but today I really get what does this community mean? What does JNF USA actually mean? And for me, you've given me a lot of hope, and you've increased my resiliency. And when I go back home in a few days, back to my war zone, I'm going to thank you guys for giving me strength. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ayaled. And you return to Seirot, and you assure them that we were there yesterday, we're here today, and forever. All right, this has been a grand plan, and there's a lot more. Have we thought of everything? Of course not. But we're leading the way. Tomorrow, we need you today to join us in building together. So it's not alone. So I want to invite our affiliates who are with us here today, who they are part of our building today and tomorrow. Please welcome all of our Jewish National Fund affiliates. All right, they're here. They're not, but they're with us always. Our affiliates in Israel who could not join us, but that are always with us every moment. Now we got Noah down in the Arava. Uh, and I think, Noah, how are you doing? Thank you, everyone. We're doing great. And so, go ahead, Noah. Noah. We are not alone, and you are not alone. We are your Israeli partners who could, join, could not join you in person today. Yet, we are here with you. The Build Together plan is about all of us. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, everyone. A lone wall, Ammunition Hill. our next year's global conference is in Dallas, Texas. That's right, Dallas, Texas. November 14th to 17th, we will be there and we can talk with you about how far we've come, what we have achieved, and what we still need to do.
Ido, who came from the army right from to here. God, the doers, thank you all for being here today with us to remember that never again teach it and believe it. We need all us of us to stand up tall. Together, we need to be strong as partners and the voice for the people and land of Israel. Maya, where are you? Let's see. I'll... Oh, there you are, Maya from Hashomer. First off to everybody, thank you for being with us on the Zoom here today. Maya, what do you have to say? Beginning from this December, every week, Jewish National Fund USA will have volunteer trips to Israel, working with Hashomer Chadash, so you can be part of our Build Together plan. Sign up now, as I hear some of the weeks are already sold out. And for college students, for college students, I want to tell you that we have alternative winter and spring break. And for young professionals, we have a volunteer trip between Christmas and New Year's. You better sign up now. I happen to know the German very well. It's my daughter, Allie. You know what? The high school people here, we're going to be opening Muss High School very soon. So if you haven't been, you better sign up. And if you've been, you better get at least five teenagers to sign up so that they can experience the semester abroad experience that you did. And now I have to ask you to fundraise. It costs money to contribute. Create a peer-to-peer -peer page. By the way, the Muss High School kids created one, and they raised in just a couple of weeks over $200,000. And I want to announce here today a match. The first $6 million gift to our Leave Not Be A Hot campaign from the Horowitz Zussman family. So let's achieve what we have always achieved Jewish unity, a conversation of shared values, a belief in tomorrow. We are not a people of Oy Bay. We are a people of leaders. We'll win, and we win in the battlefields, and we'll win in building the new lives and new communities in the land of Israel with the people of Israel. We will win because we are one, and we will win because we're Jewish National Fund and all of you. Thank you. Please welcome Joe Wolfson, chair of our World Zionist Village, and his daughter Sarah to share our declaration of Jewish unity, followed by a rousing performance from our special in uniform band. That's for Sarah, not me. We, supporters of Israel and the Jewish people everywhere, stand inspired by our shared history and united by our common destiny. Spurred on by Zionism's positive impact on humanity, Zionism, the right for our people to return to our ancestral homeland, we stand every day more determined than ever to build our land and people of Israel as a homeland for the Jewish people everywhere. We come from every corner of the globe, from different backgrounds and beliefs, and recommit ourselves to making our voices heard for a stronger, more secure, and more prosperous Israel. 
Jewish National Fund USA commits that over the next decade, we will have one million voices for Israel, from birth to the boardroom to beyond, all helping to build a bright, beautiful, and secure future for the land and people of Israel. We, we stand, stand together, together for Israel. Yeah. We, we are, are one. one. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join us in the singing of the Hatifa.
My name is Adi. I'm one of the first musicians in the four special in uniform bands. We are so proud to represent the 900 soldiers with special needs who currently serve in the IDF in 50 bases throughout the country. We hope that our program will continue to grow and allow so many others to participate. Yeah! And as you all can see, music makes us fly. But, but you are the wind beneath our wings. So thank you very, very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amit Samuchi. I am 20 years old, and I live close to Jerusalem. I serve in the Israel Defense Forces. As a singer in a band called Spatial in Uniform. To me, singing in uniform is a pride and a mission. Am Israel Ha! Hello, Miriam! Hello! My name is Doron Laor. I am 23 years old. I live in Oda Sharon. And I'm singing in my band. Hi, everyone. My name is Ellie Broskow, and I'm a senior in high school in Oakland, California. So last spring semester, I had the amazing privilege of going on Alexander Must High School in Israel, and it was without a doubt Yes, yes. Uh, without a doubt, the most amazing experience of my life. And while I was there, I wrote an original song uh, about the experience, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. It's called Best Life, and I'm so honored to be performing it with Doron, Amit, and Adi today. So enjoy. Just fine. 
שמעתי שעושים פה מסיבה בלעדיי, אף אחד לא עושה את זה יותר טוב ממני, היי, נשים את הצרות מאחוריי, אני לא הולך עד שכולכם מג'נונים, היי, שמעתי שהתחלתם בלעדיי, אף אחד לא עושה את זה יותר טוב ממני, היי, הראש כבר מסתובב כולם בעי, לא נעצור עד שכולכם מג'נונים. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join us in the singing of the Hatikva.
thank you for an incredible national conference. Travel safely, be strong, and la heat traot. I'm not afraid. 